Deutschlands populärstes Auto, der Volkswagen, geht im großen Examen für seinen Besitzer mit Temperament durchs Feuer. Einmal in Zeitlupe. Diese Prüfungen werden nicht aus artistischen Gründen gemacht, sondern die privaten Nachahmung nicht unbedingt zu empfehlen. Aber wie man sieht... We're pulling another vehicle out of our garage. It looks like a 2018 Volkswagen. T-I-G-U-A-N. Now to me that would say Taiguan, but I'm told it's Tiguan, so... So be it. Sterling-wise, there's really nothing exciting to look at here. I bet you could set it on fire and still nobody would notice. But that's good because if you're driving in a hurry, the police probably won't notice it either. The base price starts at $26,000, but if you load it up with all the options like leather and all-wheel drive, which is an extra $1,300, it can go right up to $37,000. Wow. This was the base stripped model. Really didn't have any options at all. That became rather obvious when I looked at the dash and saw all I'm getting is AM-FM for my radio. Cruel and unusual punishment. Does anyone even listen to AM-FM anymore? No satellite radio, but we do get a rear backup camera. Okay. As always, one of the first things we do when we get a car is take the headlights out and see how they perform, so we'll do that right now. Get it out of the way. It's dark enough, so let's take a look. By the way, I have to compliment Volkswagen on this heating system. I only had the vehicle running for 60 seconds, and it's blowing lots of nice warm air out. I'm very impressed. Here we have the low beams on a building 100 feet away. Plenty of bright light. Lots of height, too. Now we switch to the high beam. Wow. No complaints here. Here we have the headlights on a building 300 feet away with the high beams. Plenty of light here. Good spread, too. Some of the best headlights I've ever tested. Now we go to the low beam. Wow, even reaches out. I think this is the furthest slow beam, again, I've ever reviewed. So, A plus for the VW headlights here. By the way, this vehicle also has cornering lights. It means if you turn the steering wheel to the left, left side of the road lights up. Turn to the right, does the same thing on the other side. If you're driving on tight mountain roads at night, this is a handy feature to have. Getting back to the car, the only engine offered is a 2 liter, putting out 184 horsepower. Maximum torque comes in at a low 1600 RPM. The last EPA figures I read, 23 in the city, 27 on the highway with two-wheel drive, or 21 to 27 with all-wheel drive, which we did not get. This basic engine has been around almost forever in the Volkswagen and Audi line. It's proven itself to be reliable enough. Unlike other compact SUVs that only give you a 6-speed automatic, in this Volkswagen we get a nice 8-speed automatic. Would have been nice to have paddle shifters on the steering wheel, but didn't happen. Let's take a look at the cabin, starting with the second row seating. Plenty of room for two full-size adults back there. No map pockets on the back seats, an attempt to save a few bucks. The cabin is nothing fancy, but the quality of materials and workmanship is very good. Surprisingly, we do get a third row seating for two small children or a couple puppy dogs. On some models, it's a standard. On others, it's a $500 option. Depends on what version of the Tiguan you get. Of course, all of the seats can be folded down for extra storage. And yes, we do get a real spare tire under here. This glove box is huge. Very large. Very good. Thank you very much, Volkswagen. 
Also get a small console in between the seats. The best climate control layout in the market. You get three simple knobs and a couple of buttons. Doesn't get any easier than that. Why can't all cars do it like this? A nice gauge cluster with useful information. Overall, I rate the interior excellent, but it have two minor gripes. And here's one of them. The sun visors do not slide, so you have this big gap in the glass. On a sunny day, you can get your face baked by the sun. Why don't they slide? I mean, it wouldn't cost any extra money to design it that way. My second gripe has to do with the ignition placement. If you want a Volkswagen, pay close attention, please. Most cars have a key slot in a horizontal position. There's a reason for that. If you put the key in the horizontal position, it's easy. You stick the key in the slot, one turn, start the vehicle. But when you put the key slot in the vertical position, like so, you only get half a turn. So with this setup, you have just enough turning ability to turn on the electronics, but not enough to start the car. You have to turn your hand over. So you're handling the key twice, like so. Where with other vehicles, you only have to do this once. If you own a Volkswagen, you're probably already familiar with this annoying habit, but Amazingly, no one at Volkswagen seems to be aware of this annoying habit. Year after year, they keep making the same ignition design. And this is a redesigned 2018, completely new. you think that they would have updated and changed this, but for some reason they don't. Oh well, maybe next year. But having a Volkswagen is about the pleasure of driving, not worrying about ignition switches. And we're going to start driving right now and give you lots of fuel economy figures before we're done with this test. Thus far, I'm getting around 23 MPG in city traffic and around 24 to 26 in mixed freeway and city commuting. But we're going to take some long highway trips to see if we can bump those figures up a bit. That's coming up later in the video. This vehicle is not a lightweight. With all-wheel drive, it nears 4,000 pounds. We don't have that, so we're slightly lighter. So 0 to 60 acceleration isn't going to lay much rubber. I think that S stands for Sport Mode, so we're going to click on there and see how fast we can get this to run. So let's give it a go. Bit of hesitation off the line, but once the engine starts turning, not an issue. A nice firm brake pedal feel too. Volkswagen wants you to put 38 pounds of air in these tires. That's pretty high. It can result in a rough ride. This was delivered at 34 pounds. I'm just going to leave it that way to smooth things out. But I think we're going to hear a lot of racket on these speed bumps. Which is what we do to test the suspension if you watch my videos. 25 to 30 miles per hour. Bump number one. Loud, but I didn't feel too much very solid body structure. Another one, another one, and the big nasty one. Hang on. Oh! Heard that one, but again didn't feel it. A very solid body structure. And all the thumping again is due to the tires and tire pressures, not the vehicle itself. This electric power steering doesn't have any feel, but it's quick and responsive, so I'm not complaining great when taking tight corners especially corners like this I know it's not a sports car but Volkswagens are sporty to drive let's see if we can get some tire squealing here doing pretty good I'm impressed but it's a German car right they're supposed to corner great even if they are SUVs we're going to take this on an out-of-town highway trip, see what type of fuel economy we get in the real world. So stay tuned. We're going to 
going to be doing some more fuel economy testing. In this case, a freeway trip of approximately 60 miles. So stay tuned. By the way, this is a fantastic vehicle to be driving on the freeway. The excellent steering and stability are right up there in top grade, and we do have a lot of crosswinds, which ordinarily would be blowing a typical vehicle all over the road, but not here. Okay, here you go, 51 miles, average 67 miles per hour, 33 MPG. We'll be doing a return trip real soon, stay tuned. But first, I have to make some visits off the pavement. This brings up the question, can the Tiguan be taken off pavement and off-roading? Well, obviously it can because we're doing so. If you order the optional all-wheel drive, it's even more than capable of doing so, especially in soft sand like this. We don't have all-wheel drive and it's still doing just fine, thank you. If an SUV can be taken off-road, it's not a true SUV. This can be taken off-road because it does have the excellent ground clearance and a solid body structure. Just keep in mind we're talking light duty use here. This is not a Jeep Wrangler or Toyota 4Runner that has a heavy duty frame. This is basically a car platform. So again, light duty camping, we're off-roading. No Baja 500 stuff. After we're done with my scheduled stops, we're going to get back on the freeway and do some more fuel economy testing. It's late in the afternoon. I'm done with my off-road errands. We'll get back on the freeway and do another fuel economy test. By the way, I bought a house out here. The real estate agent says it needs a little fixing up. Let's go take a look. So, this is the address. Not too bad, a coat of paint, a little bit of roof work, and an air-conditioned garage. Wow, I got a real good deal. Well, time to move on and do our fuel economy test, so let's do it. We're coming to an end of our return freeway trip. Doing a lot quicker, around 75 miles per hour, and a lot of passing. Computer says 27.5 mpg. We'll call that a wrap. We want to make sure you get your money's worth, so here are some figures for you. So far in the test, we put 329 miles, averaging 38 miles per hour in mixed commuting, 28.2 mpg. And for the past 1,835 miles, averaging 32 miles per hour in mixed driving, 28.7 mpg. There you go. Here's my take on the Volkswagen Tiguan. It hauls gear and people the way an SUV should. It goes off-road the way an SUV should. The difference between this and other compact SUVs, it also drives the way a sports sedan should. It's got a lively engine, quick steering, excellent brakes, a nice suspension that corners very well. In the end, it likes to be driven, it likes to be driven hard. So if you're into sports sedans from Germany, and you want to have the utility of an SUV, this vehicle is definitely worth a look. Coming up are some links to other compact SUVs we've driven. Just click on and watch.